at the time that I was getting married, I shared a testimony uh -huh. about my age. Oh, publicly. Publicly, because for me it was a testimony and I thought I was going to encourage other people, yeah. other ladies in the waiting. But the time there was a delay. Oh. That same testimony that I said yes. is what was used against me. So my mother was expecting a boy. Uh -huh. So because of whatever emotion she expressed, experienced, oh. she didn't breastfeed me for a while. She had to be talked to to breastfeed me. Oh. And she didn't take me for vaccination. Oh, now that's not my script. Okay. Uh -huh. She didn't take me for vaccination. I prayed against the spirit of rejection yes. because I had had, I'm sure you've heard about the spirit of rejection. Yes. I prayed, I prayed rather against the spirit of rejection. Mm -hmm. Then I get married. And one time my husband told me, Judy, you have to deal with your anger. My goodness. Yeah. That was my wake up call. This thing I have been praying about. Yes. It seems like it has it's followed still me. There right into marriage. Yes. Again, one of the things that I must also say, that it's important for you to have desire. Mm. One of the things that happens for singles, sometimes if you are disappointed, you go through disappointment after disappointment after disappointment, you lose desire. Because uh. again, I met another man of God who was like, hey, Judy, make us, Anna. Yeah. you know? So th then I was like, ah, okay, fine. Actually, this is something probably I need to think about because I had shelved it. Uh-huh. You get it? You can shell. Yeah, I had. I had, truthfully. Hi there and welcome back. This is the Roda Kidula Show. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for believing in what we do here, having conversations on family relationships, marriages, and the well-being of a Christian. And uh, a story has just come. Sorry, I know it's the intro, but I have to say this. In the beginning, when we started this, and we were thinking we have to make it about God, make it about Jesus, uh, there was a voice saying, oh, when you make it about God, it won't sell. But look at us now, because it is God, God handles everything. He has brought us this far, and thank you for being used of the Lord to support what we do. Uh, also, a special thanks to JK Studios for recording and packaging this uh, content for you. So if you're looking for videography or photography services, please consider JK Studios. They do an amazing job. You can also check them out on their social media platforms. So my name is Rhoda Kidula Kedaha, and today, I have Amzungu. <laughs> Actually, saying Amzungu is correct English, yes, right? Yes. And I told Jemo that today I'm going to host Amzungu. That's why I came dressed like this. I'm going to um, talk to a very serious woman in the society. <laughs> and she is here. So you are the Mzungu. First and foremost, I'm very humbled that thank that's what you. you think of me. Yes. Aisha, thank you so much. You can only say glory to God. Wait, you know, the uh, first time, mm. I, not actually the first time, I, I had seen you here and there, but I felt you are... Uko, state house, Uko. You had seen me somewhere on social media. Yeah, on social media, your book here and there. And then I'm like... Hey, these are those powerful, you know, when they call oh. conferences in the state house. These ones are the ones who go. <laughs> Thank you. It's prophetic. I receive in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Then I was called for this event by Parklands Baptist. Yes. Then I'm like, I'm speaking alongside Judy Mzungu. I'm like, oh my goodness. Uh -huh. Then I really wanted to come. And here you out. Actually, I wanted to be fast. And I was told, no, you had requested to be fast. <laughs> I wanted to be fast so that I don't embarrass myself. Then I was told, no, she had requested to be the first one to speak. Then I was like, I need to get there so early so that I hear. Then I came late, mm. just after you were done. Yes. But no. it was nice meeting you. And I think you were very pleasant. You know uh -huh. how you just, we hit it off. Oh, yes. Without yeah. even necessarily an introduction. And oh, for me, yeah. that was really powerful. Thank you. Yeah. And we were also in Woodley the other day. Yes. Talking to Excans. Yes. We just met again. Again. <laughs> Please introduce yourself to us. All right. <laughs> My name is Judy Mzungu Jabali. I am a Kingdom Life Coach and founder of the Realignment Solution. I am also married to one Isaac Jabali Hakula.
Mzungu. Yes. You need to tell us a bit about the name Mzungu. The name Mzungu. Mzungu is actually my son name. I my father died. Eh? His name uh-huh. was Tom Mzungu. Uh-huh. Yes. So I of course became Judy Mzungu. Everyone asks me why didn't I drop that name Judy mm-hmm. Mzungu when I got married. Oh yeah. Um that's because I got married at a pretty advanced age of my life mm-hmm. and by then I had already built a strong brand yeah. around Judy Mzungu. Mzungu. So it didn't make sense for me to drop that name. Uh-huh. And so I adopted my father my or rather my husband's name. Uh-huh. You know permanently and pensionably i changed it mpaka kwa i siuliza maswali i need to change mine you know kidula is actually my grandfather <laughs> <laughs> Story for another day. But because people already knew Kidula, I was like, where? When no, you but send at least me you have Kedaha, Kedaha, right? Yeah, Kedaha. But the interesting it's thing, when you change, when you go to change, yeah. they don't drop your name on your ID. Uh-huh. They actually don't drop your name. They only add. So what I have is actually what is on my ID. Oh, Mzungu was in your Mzungu ID. Mzungu is in my ID. You my, don't want to know what's in my ID. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> You do not want to know that. Yes. So tell us a bit about yourself. You you've been married? Yes. yes. You talked about Jabani. Jabani. Yes. Mm-hmm. I've been married nine years now. Mm-hmm. Yes. Nine years. Yes. And if you don't mind me asking, yes. you have children? Well, not yet. We are still mm-hmm. in the waiting. Uh-huh. Yes. It's something it's interesting that that's the first question you asked me about. Yes. Initially, there's a point at which I was kind of like iffy ish ish about talking about it. Oh yes. And that was because at the time that I was getting married, I shared a testimony uh-huh. about my age. Oh, publicly. Publicly because for me it was a testimony and I thought I was going to encourage other people, yeah. other ladies in the waiting. But the time there was a delay. Oh, that same testimony that I said yes. is what was used against me. Explain. At the time, you know, I had suffered miscarriages. Mm-hmm. And so d- d- naturally then I didn't have children and the people that I was sharing with and you know just telling them about my challenges and everything somehow went, you know, started talking about the fact about my age. Oh yeah. You get it's it? because of your age. It's because of my age that's why I'm struggling and that really hit me in the wrong places. Mm-hmm. Um so for me to talk about it now is mm-hmm. actually a sign of healing. It's a sign of healing. Yeah, it's a sign of healing. It's a sign of um, accepting where I am at in my journey mm-hmm. and um and not not fearing what anyone else has to say about it yeah. because I've made peace with it. Yeah. Yes. So once pa- pa- person makes peace with their journey or their season in life then it becomes easy. that's a sign of healing it's a sign of healing that's a sign of healing and a, a big chunk of our conversation will be revolving around healing because yes. the first time we had a conversation she yes. said something that i was like <laughs> actually you told me uh-huh. that you you found healing in your marriage yes so you walked into marriage broken Wounded. broken and you knew it i didn't know oh you didn't know i didn't know did mr jabali know No, he didn't know. No one knows. Wait. <laughs> we tell no, we tell single ladies heal fast. He, you know, I, let me tell you what. Me I just think a lot mm-hmm. of those things that people narrate are actually a lot of theory. Oh yes. Because the truth is by the time you meet someone they are broken just as much as you are broken. Can it then can marriage now even break even the more? Yes. It can. So we are not saying mm-hmm. uh because I'm broken I should get into marriage to find my healing. No, we are not saying you should get into marriage to find your healing, yeah. but again we are not saying that just because you come from a broken background then yeah. it writes you off as far as the institution of marriage is concerned. True. Yeah, I agree. You get it? Eh? Yes. Because we are coming into a place where Rhoda we are mm-hmm. beginning to tell call people narcissistic, yeah. toxic. Yes. Then probably because now there's a lot of information on social media. Mm-hmm. So what are we doing? You start going to someone's background, you probably find they they came from a single mother yes. or whatever, then you start branding them and thinking that that they are not fit for the institution of marriage. Oh yes. And likewise, there are people who look like they come from perfect families, they come from religious mm-hmm. backgrounds, they were raised by pastors. Oh yes. 
Oh. And you would think or you would imagine that these are the perfect candidates for marriage, yet in their own way would come with their own form of brokenness mm -hmm. that needs healing. Oh, yes. And that's why then we must de begin to demystify the issue of healing as far as marriage is concerned, mm -hmm. so that then we begin to understand that, you know what, marriage is the coming together of two people, yes. necessarily not healed. Mm-hmm. But a good marriage is where we then are able to provide a, an atmosphere, mm -hmm. an environment yeah. for one another to heal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. When I when I get married, yes, I should give Jackson the atmosphere for healing you, from whatever he might have not healed from. Let me tell you my story, then it will help you to... Yes, let's go back. To, then let, let I needed you to first explain who is a kingdom life coach. Yes, I said I'm a kingdom life yeah, coach, Yeah, that's right? how you describe yes. yourself. I am a kingdom life coach, which means that I coach based on the word of God, plain and simple. We don't touch any theory, we don't touch anything else. So what, what would you coach me about? I already read my Bible, I already pray, I fast... Why do I need a uh, life you. coach? That's a very good question. Yeah. Now we have to go back to what I, it's called. And I said I'm a founder of the realignment solution. Oh, yes. So the realignment solution is based on alignment of spirit, soul, and body. And body. Because you're a spiritual being mm -hmm. with a soul mm -hmm. encased and in a body. body. Yes. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the reason why I called myself a kingdom life coach is because usually there's a by the time people are discovering maybe there's something wrong with them there's a sense of mm -hmm. emptiness that is happening within you mm -hmm. many times this sense of emptiness will be addressed by because we are christians by dealing with the spirit yes so what do we do we pray mm -hmm. we fast we spend all the time in the kesha and everything yes and sometimes we still are nursing a broken soul which is where i was uh -huh. i was a believer uh -huh. A minister, I was a youth minister. Uh -huh. That's serving in, in church. The, yes, serving in church. But yet there was an area of my life that was not whole. Yeah. I remember one time, I used to change job from job to job to job. Mm -hmm. That time I was at uh, ICC West. Mm -hmm. And Bishop Kitoto, that time he was Pastor Kitoto, asked me, Judy, what is wrong? Yeah. How come you keep moving around? Yes. He could see there was a problem. Whereas mm -hmm. that problem was could have been addressed spiritually and it was addressed spiritually. Yeah. But the core of that problem mm -hmm. was a brokenness within. Yes. Which goes to say that you might be a Christian, but one, your sense of fulfillment, your, your ability to fulfill purpose and destiny mm -hmm. is hindered by the state of your soul. Yes. What is the state of your emotion? Mm -hmm. What is the state of your mind? Mm-hmm. So because I was carrying rejection on the inside, realized that I had gifts and abilities that yes. were inside of me. And I knew it. So I would get into a job, express myself, Rhoda, really do well. I mean, mm -hmm. I would ace it. Mm -hmm. But somehow not be able to go into the next level. Yeah. As far. So it's, it seemed like there was a ceiling that was covering me. Yes. And it's very frustrating. That's why I talked about the sense of inner fulfillment. Mm -hmm. It's very frustrating when you as an individual know that there's so much more inside of you, but somehow you cannot just be able to express yes. it. So how then do many people did? You look, you look for the next job, hoping that yeah. that is the place that will. It does, just doesn't work again. You look for the next job. You look mm -hmm. for the next job. You look yes. for the next job. So that was me. Now... Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the kingdom life coach. So I was talking yes. about the state of the soul. That is to show you diagnosis. So you can be a, a church goer, mm -hmm. baby born again, mm -hmm. going serving. to heaven, serving in church. Mm -hmm. But the areas of your life that are not quite showing your career, your you know family, family relationships, mm -hmm. um, understanding where you need to go, just having a sense of purpose and identity, which you are asking me about, yeah. becomes a bit of a challenge. So you find such a person is living, actually existing. Yeah, exist surviving. <laughs> yeah, surviving is the word. But they are not quite able to find fulfillment. Mm -hmm. They're not able to answer the question, what did God create me to, to do? do. 
And that's where that you'll find a lot of people asking, what is my purpose? Yeah. What is my purpose? Who am I? So the answer is usually in the alignment, either of spirit, mm -hmm. where someone is not actually able to engage spiritually to hear the voice of God. Yeah. Ah. It's possible to read the Bible, mm -hmm. but read it as a novel. Oh, yes. Or as with a, no as revelation. <laughs> yes, with mm -hmm. no revelation, with no... You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So there could be the spirit is not functioning mm -hmm. or your soul. What is your mindset towards yourself? Yeah. Some, for many people, poor self-image because what were you told? What mm -hmm. happened to you in the journey of life? Yeah. You get it? And then emotionally, maybe you are carrying wounds. Oh, yes. That will tend to affect what mm -hmm. you know how you attract on the outside yeah. and then your willpower could be taken out or uh, the other thing that tends to send, tends to happen is sometimes your soul is not following your spirit your mm -hmm. soul is following your body so you are, you are christian but you're still led by fleshly desires oh yes that's why you still have people in church struggling with still masturbation yeah. addiction you understand mm -hmm. you you get it eh? yes. it's because of the state of the alignment Mm -hmm. That goes to tell you why I am a kingdom life yeah, coach. Yeah, now I understand. <laughs> and why I said the realignment solution. Yes. So what, at the end, we t we, my, my desire is to get us to the place where if you go back to, I believe it is Luke chapter 5, there about, mm -hmm. the parable of the four soils. Mm -hmm. To get you to the place where you are fertile soil. Uh -huh. It's Luke chapter 8, I think. You become fertile soil yeah where when the word of god comes because your spirit is okay you're able to have retention yeah. and you're able to nurture it mm -hmm. because your soul is okay you're able to interpret correctly what it is that god is speaking to you and then because your emotion is okay you have love joy peace mm -hmm. you know and yes. then because your will is submitted to the will of god you're able to move and walk in dominion mm -hmm. wow Hey, I, we, we could sense? stop there. Yeah? <laughs> we could stop there. Okay. Now, where, where does your story begin? My story now mm -hmm. begins with getting married. Yeah. No, let me say. No, yeah, let me start with, let me, No, no. Let uh -huh. me start with getting married. Then I'll backtrack. Don't worry. Okay. I'll cover you very well. Yeah. <laughs> so my story begins yeah. with getting married. Yeah. So here I am. I get married, like I said, at the age of forty. Mm -hmm. So I get married and, you know, um, start living within this atmosphere. And um, I, I actually didn't realize that I had been carrying a lot. You know, I had anger issues, oh. even from a child, even from childhood. I remember I had the anger issues. I remember hitting my head on the floor in anger. As a child? Yeah, as a child. I remember having anger issues as a teenager. I remember having anger issues, you know, at work. By the way, I do very, uh, my job very well. Mm -hmm. But if you cross my path, my friend. Mm. Yes. So, I read a book. Why you act the way you do? I was wondering what's wrong with me. Yeah. It says I'm a choleric sanguine. Mm -hmm. And I thought, and one of the challenges of a choleric sanguine is that you have anger issues. Anger issues. I started praying, Rhoda, mm -hmm. for anger to go anger to go. <laughs> God get the spirit of anger. Hey, uh -huh. I prayed. Another challenge that I always had is that I always, you know, found somehow I would encounter a lot of rejection. Uh, you know, so I prayed against the spirit of rejection yes. because I had had, I'm sure you've heard about the spirit of rejection. Yes. I prayed, I prayed rather against the spirit of rejection. Mm -hmm. Then I get married. And one time my husband told me, Judy, you have to deal with your anger. My goodness. Brother, yeah. that was my wake-up call. This thing I have been praying about. Yes. It seems like it has it's followed still me. There. Right into marriage. Yes. But I can't tell you that I knew how to deal with it. What happened to me is that I hit a wilderness season where I was out of work for mm -hmm. a while. So in this wilderness season, because now, of course, the phone stops ringing. Oh, yes. So the phone has stopped ringing. And then, so what did I do? I started listening a lot to Priscilla Shire. And oh, Sarah I love Roberts. that woman. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'd listen to those two preachers. I started listening to them. I started listening to them. And in that season of aloneness, in that season of loneliness, mm -hmm. 
because I was also spending a lot of time in prayer and reading the word. Yeah. That's when God reminded me where my pain had started. Oh. I had been carrying a lot of anger. Remember from childhood? Yes. I could not be able to place where it came from. Mm -hmm. Now, in my family, I'm number four. So there are three girls ahead of me. Uh -huh. So, when I was born, my mother was expecting a boy. It's like you're reading my script. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also number four and I was supposed to be a boy. Okay, <laughs> yes. So my mother was expecting a boy. Uh -huh. So because of whatever emotion she expressed, experienced, oh. she didn't breastfeed me for a while. She had to be talked to to breastfeed me. Oh. And she didn't take me for vaccination. Oh, now that's not my script. Okay. Uh -huh. She didn't take me for vaccination. So, even now, people knock to come and ask you, can you come and vaccinate your child, right? Yeah. She would hide me. Just because you're a girl. Because she or wanted she's me to disappointed. Die. I don't get it. It's okay, you don't have to get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just thinking I've given birth to a child. Yes. You see, people process emotions very differently. Yes. yes. So... So I grew up with, with no form of vaccination. Even today, the only vaccination that I have is COVID. Many people wonder, why didn't I take myself for vaccination? I was afraid. You understand? Yeah. What if I put in the vaccination and it works against yes. me? In any case, God has sustained me up to now. So. Mm -hmm. so I grew up, that was now, in that season, in marriage, in my 40s. Yeah. That's when I'm discovering, ah... This is where yeah, the, the root, the root mm. of the problem is. You see, for me, it was revealed by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, I had to process the the emotion and begin to, maybe for the first time in my life, understand mm -hmm. what it is my mother experienced. Mm -hmm. for her then to go through whatever it is that she went with me. Is she still alive? No. By the time I was going through this, she was long dead and buried. I have many questions that I don't even know how to ask. Mm. You are a baby, not being vaccinated, not being breastfed. And then at what time did she accept you? I guess life happened, but again, the other thing about it is, I forget that rejection at initially. I was different from my sisters. I still am very different. I'm, I'm the more outgoing, extroverted uh -huh. one. My sisters are more, you know, um, introverted. Mm -hmm. And therefore, remember, so before now we get into answering that question. Yeah. So I was talking about processing it. Yes. So as I began then to process, my mind went back to my mother's own story. Mm -hmm. My mother was um, a young girl yes. with dreams. And then one time um, she's at the farm digging mm -hmm. and she sees a Volkswagen Kombi. Ooh. And she sees, I think she says three men or she said three men. Mm -hmm. And she sees people exchanging money. Mm -hmm. And then she's told to pack up and go. That's how my mother got married. So she had no sold. choice. Yes. She had no choice in the matter. Yeah. Oh. So this, we are, we are dealing with a lady who had shattered dreams. Yes. Then she got, my dad was like about 20 something year old, years older than her. She, he was quite, you know, like they really had quite an age gap. Mm -hmm. But... Again, my, my father had married before and these marriages had not worked. Mm -hmm. So my mother was also getting into a situation where she was actually, you know, finding herself in a home where other women had been before. Oh. These other women all had sons. Think about that generation where the, yeah. po the place of a son yes. validates your position within the home. Mm -hmm. So she's already feeling like, you know what? Already, this is not what I wanted. Can yeah. I have some form of validation? Oh, yeah. And the person who was supposed to come and validate her messed up big time. 
and appeared as a baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> Why not number two and number three? Why you? I, I don't know, but I think maybe she thought this was her last card. Okay, you understand. But yeah. at number four, mm-hmm. is there number five? No, no, no. You are the last I'm one. I'm the last one. Oh, okay. So you were her last. I was the last card. And you decided to be a girl. And I decided to be mm-hmm. a girl. <laughs> so, so anyway, so think about it that mm-hmm. way. And then think about the fact that um, first she has shattered dreams. Yes. She comes, she's wife number four. Uh-huh. These are that women have sons. She doesn't have a son, son. of her own. Mm-hmm. And then think about, especially in those contexts, even today, mm-hmm. most marriages struggle because most men don't know how to support the woman yes. within the home, right? Mm-hmm. So she comes there and she's alone. Wow. So are you dealing with a person who is who has a lot of mixed emotions mm-hmm. within her? Yes. She's already feeling rejected from wherever she came from and probably rejected within her marital home. Mm-hmm. When I began to process it that way, Rhoda, guess what? I forgave you my forg- mother. Yeah, I've even forgiven her. You have? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at some, you've been forced into marriage. Yes. You didn't even choose this life for yourself. Yes, yes, yes. And I can't tell you that, you know, growing up, I didn't have, you know, a lot of questions for mm-hmm. her. They would, you know, I'd, I'd, you know I'd, I'd, I had a lot of questions, really tough questions for her that she probably couldn't answer. But it was interesting for me that at the time that I made peace with her, mm-hmm. it was okay. You know, I, it was like 20 years after she was long gone. Ah. You know? And that calls to tell you something. Mm-hmm. For you to forgive, you don't need to be two people. That, that's, that, that was my next question. You don't need to be two people. You, you need d- closure. We always say closure. Closure. You think closure is going to talk to another, the other person and put them down? No. Closure is you making peace with mm-hmm. whatever happened. They may or may not be there. They may or may not change. They may. You understand? Yeah. Because you don't have control over the other person. You only have control over you. Mm-hmm. And just realizing that, you know, um, what you have within you is actually controlling your destiny. Yeah. Now, when I made peace with that part of my life, mm-hmm. Rhoda, something interesting began to happen. Yeah. My, the gifts within me began to reignite. Mm-hmm. Someone just from nowhere tells me, transcribe, write for me, my, uh, transcribe for me as someone. Uh-huh. So I transcribed as someone, mm-hmm. but then now because... As a child, I was a natural writer. Yeah. I was able to tap into that and write the book very well until this man of God, he was a man of God, told Mm -hmm. me, you're very intelligent. Ah. So he came back and forced me, why don't you go back on social media? Remember, I had switched off all my social media platforms Mm -hmm. because I'm in a wilderness season. Life is not making sense. I am broke. Mm -hmm. So somehow I succumbed and then I started writing. Mm-hmm. Then someone else saw my, my content and is like, I think you need to turn, turn, turn this into mm-hmm. a YouTube channel. Uh-huh. Then I started now mm-hmm. um, doing YouTube. But then again, another important thing happened for me. One time in church, I'm asked to lead a service. And that's what ignited my speaking oh. gifts. All these gifts, Rhoda, were within me. You, were, you had not spoken before? From the time I left school. Really? Yes. That's what lack of healing can do to a person. Oh. It actually hinders the expression mm-hmm. of what is within you. Oh, yes. When you ask me about kingdom life coaching, mm-hmm. when you ask me about the realignment solution. Yeah. You had not. I hadn't. I had even forgotten about it. I was busy working to pay bills as a secretary, Uh doing all these other things out of my purpose. Yes. That's why we need to talk about healing. Because it helps you to find your identity Mm -hmm. and helps you to find your purpose and helps you then to begin to reignite your vision. That's why I called my book Power Your Vision. Power Your Vision. Now, if... Marriage. (laughs) No, wait. Yes. I sit down, mm. I know the root of why I do or behave how I, I I do and I make peace with it. Is it a one sitting? Rhoda goes to some corner, 
decides I have made peace and then everything changes the next day not necessarily and this is mm-hmm. what happens yeah? and that's why even within the book yeah. i don't actually start with the with the with the healing journey mm-hmm. you it starts with you trying to re, to remember who you are yes. you understand yeah? mm-hmm. because your identity is embedded in your spirit jeremiah 15 before i formed mm-hmm. you in your mother's womb i knew you i knew you uh-huh. you understand yeah? Yeah. so the hindrances are coming within your soul Mhm. So first we must try to find out what is in you within your spirit then we heal the soul so that yeah. now you can begin to come out. So makes okay. sense. Yeah. Yes. Oh. So it's a journey. It's a journey. It's a process. It's a process and that will come to why I wrote the book later. Yeah. But I was talking about marriage yes. and and um and healing within the context of marriage. So yeah. remember my husband is the one who first told me mm-hmm. this. And then do you remember I, I was in a wilderness season where nothing was happening so I was at home and you know really spending a lot of time with God mm-hmm. in with sermons I was praying I was fasting quite a bit and all but one of the things that I can say is that remember that one he was open with me mm-hmm. and then when I discovered he allowed me the space to be vulnerable with him oh yes so I was able to speak and say mm-hmm. this is what happened yes and that just the ability to speak and for someone to hear yeah. and not judge me yes kind of began to settle within me that's why healing is not erasing the past it's mm-hmm. changing the perspective mm. and how did you take it when he told you told me you have anger you need to deal with your anger it was it was, it was a wake up call oh Remember that that's I think that's what took me in. Uh-huh. It was a wake up call. You know some of us if we are corrected by our spouses someone tells me I have anger issues. <laughs> <laughs> And you know and and that's what that's what I think we need to correct because you know many of us get married thinking mm-hmm. it's going to be kwando siasmia. Did you uh-huh. did you watch kwando siasmia? Alejandro. No. You, Even okay. Jemo is you not didn't aware. watch it's okay you people yeah. have another generation there used to be another soap <laughs> opera called oh. Quando Sias Mia it used to say Quando Sias Mia <laughs> <laughs> tell us about Quando Sias Mia Quando Sias Mia used to have a, a, a character called Paloma I know Paloma for some You know reason. Paloma. Okay, yes. it used to have a character. Maybe you've forgotten the title. Yeah. It used to have Paloma uh-huh. and Alejandro. So because ladies especially watch a lot of soap operas and yeah. we watched a lot of movies a mm. lot, so we think that marriage is that you know place where we walk in and so then there's a there yeah, and and you know there's a a man with a white horse mm. it doesn't necessarily happen like that and that's why by the way a good marriage is where you allow yourself to be sharpened to become better allow yourself and the line yes mm-hmm. you allow yourself to be sharpened to become better as you also sharpen your spouse to become better, better. Oh. so for me that was my journey i healed within the context of oh, marriage. marriage because i was given the space mm-hmm. to be vulnerable you know i've gone to bridal showers where people are told usiseme pesa yako yote pahali iko sijui nini i just think that's a very wrong foundation why we should just allow people <laughs> to be vulnerable Yes that's what we are told even in cha- Christian bridal Christians, showers Christians yes Christian bridal showers why mm-hmm. but you know especially this because people are processing on the basis of their pain oh yes b- on the basis of a bad experience mm-hmm. you get eh mm-hmm. but we should actually actually within the context of the realignment solution we are saying we need to break the cycle of the past oh yes mhm so that then we can be able to create a better future let me tell you mm-hmm. without knowing do you know I was following into that pattern of my mother i was carrying anger uh-huh you you get what i mean oh, eh? yes. so i was coming here and not also being able to connect mm-hmm. with my spouse and i saw it i saw this thing is following me mm-hmm. so for us to be able to break away from the old script some script of our parents yeah. let me tell you i looked at my own mother's situation and i realized you know my mother, my mother suffered a lot 
First mm-hmm. and foremost, she came here married, but she carried her family with her. Oh. How? La- That's what most most African women still do. I I stopped because I looked at my mother's script. Where you still are trying to solve your uncle's problems and your sujuhu's problems mm. and carrying the whole of your family. Then when you are getting married, I don't know what you are told, but they tell you now we went anyway to Sasa. Yes. So because you have been told where anyway to Sasa, what happens? You're trying to fix yourself mm-hmm. in a lala family. You know me. Yeah. Uh, uh, my mind opened. I understood that I got married to one person. You actually you have confused us if not me. <laughs> <laughs> Number 1, uh-huh. you have said uh-huh. Sometimes we get married and we are still holding my family, my You're siblings, carrying. my cousins, my uncles. I still want to sort them, right? You you still want to sort them and then you are getting married into another family. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you about the the breaking the cycle. Uh-huh. Even a part of my healing process. I hope yes. you're getting it. Eh? Uh-huh. That then I looked at my mother. She came with her family. Uh-huh. Still carrying those tags. By the way, remembering that she's still carrying the wounds of the past. She's still feeling like they rejected her, mm-hmm. but still carrying them. Yes. Families, even if you help, help with the understanding that you are helping, but they may not necessarily come back to say thank you. But if you have not healed, what are you expecting? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Then you get married into a family. They tell you at the on you the wedding day, you now. are you belong. Hours, you belong. Us. You've been married here. Yes. And all of us including myself first get into marriage trying to think that you have to adjust to fit within this family. Yeah, to please them to Yes. Oh. Let me tell you. When I when mind woke up and I understood mm. the actual context of marriage. Yes. As being between two people. Mhm. I started focusing first and foremost because I knew that I was on a healing journey. I started focusing on healing. Started focusing on oneness with him. Yes. People might think that what I'm saying is um turning against the African model mm-hmm. of marriage. But do you know truly or rather mm-hmm. I can testify for me. Yeah. We have actually been more helpful to the family. Yes, mm-hmm. when we are one. Why? True, because true. when you're one, you can do a lot. Yes. That's very true. And because you can do a lot, you can actually go back to be of help to the extended family mm-hmm. to the father father because he have his parents are my parents yes, because you're one. I we are one. We are able That's to do powerful. so much. And because we can do so much, we are actually twice as helpful. That's so powerful. Instead of you trying to sort out people in secret in secret <laughs> sending money in, in secret, secret hiding money yes but when you come together let me tell you that is a thing that uh, the enemy fights mm-hmm. oneness no oh, yes so this mm-hmm. whole conversation by day is not to tear people apart mm-hmm. it is to say let us heal as individuals mm-hmm. when you heal as a, an individual you become a better spouse roda oh yes why because Whether when I'll submit mm-hmm. whether you do your part or not me I'll do mine. do mine. Over time won't you do yours? I will. And wh- even when you're not doing your part mm-hmm. because I am drawing from the love of God. Mm-hmm. Guess what? It is not ending and it, I have my sense of identity. Oh, yes. I will keep on serving you. But we the society will laugh at you. But you but then let me tell you let's go back to the word of god mm-hmm. that's why i called myself a kingdom life coach and i liked your intro when you said mm-hmm. that when you said god it looked like it wasn't going to work when i called myself kingdom life coach yeah. it was a great risk oh yes because it means that i have actually cut out a greater part of the society oh yes but let me tell you i'm very passionate about what i do because i believe in it 100% <laughs> yes. it is based on the word of god mm-hmm. and i can stand by it and the results are there mm-hmm. because it belongs to God. Yeah, let me tell you. Yes. Okay. So this healing we are talking about is when a one's spouse heals. Mm-hmm. The fact that first and foremost you have taken the journey, Rhoda. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you. You stop being judgmental even of your spouse. 
because I told you both people are wounded. Yes. So no, no one is not wound, wounded in this. So yeah, pia alikuja na yake, alikuja na wounds yeah. zake. They came with their own wounds. Their own wounds. But because you have taken the journey, yeah. the way you deal with it, you are not shooting arrows. Uh-huh. You come and you say, you know what? I've been here. Mm-hmm. I know it. I can see this is the pattern yeah. where you came from. Maybe you see when the way you're dealing with it is mm-hmm. very different. Yes. Even the words you're using. Even the words you're using. Mm. Why? Because there's a grace that comes upon you. Because you learn this healing brings you to the place of submission first to God. To God. Oh. Then now, that's why I said one person heals and you help the other person. And I said a good marriage is where people create an atmosphere for vulnerability. Mm-hmm. Where therefore, because they are vulnerable, they can be able to help one another yeah. to heal. That is only when, do you remember, by the way, the real context of marriage is where you connect spirit, soul, body. Mm-hmm. Where there is nothing that is standing be- between you emotionally, mm-hmm. in your thoughts, because yeah. you are aligned, you are able to reconcile. Not that you are not, not two individuals, but you are able to speak, reconcile agree chart a path forward that mm-hmm. is what is meant by the you know oneness yes when you two, these two people are able to come together in this way i tell you rhoda there is nothing they cannot do they are unstoppable that is what the enemy comes to fight it will be fight against you in terms of in law problems mm-hmm. it will fight against you in terms of societal ideologies yes. but if you can fight for First and foremost, one individual healing, your own healing as the spouse. Mm-hmm. Then with a new mindset, with the love of God, reach out to your spouse. Mm-hmm. And then begin on a journey of oneness. Yeah. This is the game changer. Does it make you perfect? It doesn't make you perfect, but yeah. you understand you're on a journey. You, are you seeing how you begin to lend each other grace? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you begin to be kind. You, you are kind. You to see, love, joy, peace, patience. Yes. You know all those things because you are spending a realignment. By the way, takes you back to spending more time with, with God. God. And not, I'm not, and I'm not talking about Pentecostal shouting prayers. Mm-hmm. No pun intended because I'm a Pentecostal. Yeah. But it's about having intimacy with God. With God. If you're intimate with God, Rhoda, imagine Madarao Maringo Isha. You realize how small you are. You are. And you realize how all this is about God I, I tell and you, not you. I tell you. There's, there's it stops guest about being, had, right, being right, yes. So, so. Who, who said uh, the best gift you can give your spouse is a, a more Christ-like you. Something like that. Being more like Christ. Yes. And I think when you say that, I just connected. Like if I get connected to God. Even my spouse will see. Yes. And you know, actually, let me tell you another thing that happens. Is mm-hmm. it is Sometimes we approach this thing from a very religious perspective. Mm-hmm. Eh? And we miss out, I said, on the soul. Eh? Uh-huh. When your soul is healed, remember, we talked about nothing standing between you and your spouse. Yes. Actually, what stands between you and your relationship with God is guilt, shame, embarrassment. So by healing, we remove all that. Uh-huh. So that now intimacy with God, you come to the place of surrender in a such a deep way. Mm -hmm. And because you're experiencing surrender in this way, what then happens is that now you're able to translate it. Oh, yeah. Oh, does that make sense? It does. So it all starts with now Rhoda. Finding Rhoda. Healing. Yes, and being so comfortable in her skin. You're not perfect. Yeah. But you're comfortable in your skin. And when you're comfortable in your skin, imagine you can say sorry. Yes. <laughs> and mean it. <laughs> yes, you can say you can sorry say because sorry it doesn't take it. away anything from you. Mm-hmm. You can celebrate the other person yeah. because it doesn't take anything away from you. You can come together and do great things together yes. because you're able now to share. A vision. No, I, let me tell you, I've been there. I'm not saying this to mock anyone. Mm-hmm. You can sleep on the same bed, drive in the same car, but not be one. Live in the same yeah, house. It's not even, you don't even need to apologize. Mm. It is so, it's even normal. Yeah, but we must we must begin to rewrite the script. Yeah. yeah. And the answer is, you know, that's why I'm very passionate about this thing. When you heal, 
It's possible. Let me tell you, there are marriages that are breaking not because people are bad. If only they can heal. Mm-hmm. If only they can heal, we would give marriages a better chance. Yeah. We would not be giving up. We would not be giving up on ourselves. Mm. And I mean, each other. look at me. I was a perfect candidate for for divorce eh? with marry anger. So you, yeah. so you would have just said anger issues. Anger and, and irreconcilable <laughs> differences. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I couldn't get to talk. Yeah. What was she doing? She was shouting at me. At me. Doing what? Are you yeah. getting it? Yeah. So uh, there is hope. We need to go back and heal and then retrace our, our back, our places to intimacy with God so that we stop playing religion and church. Mm-hmm. Is that now what makes you comfortable? Um, yes, number one, sharing this story. Yes. And number two, not really. Like the way I asked you about children. Yes. You were not offended. I no. didn't feel like you were no, offended. No, no, I wasn't. You know, if we are used to. We are used to, are you married, children, like they follow each other. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And no. sometimes mm. someone can actually be really offended oh, by no. that question. Ah. No, I'm not, I'm not, mm-hmm. because I've, I've made peace with it. And I believe that uh, probably we come, you know, I, I like that you hosted Rebecca Dawn. Oh yeah. And, and you know, they, they, were, they were open about it. Yes. And um, we probably, uh, my my husband, I'd say, is also a very private person, which I really respect. Yeah. Our journey, and, and we really, for us, we're really on a journey of faith. Mm-hmm. Eh? But we also appreciate that there's a place of also being enc- able to encourage other people. Mm-hmm. You understand? When I say I got married at the age of 40, that should be a, a, so, a source of encouragement uh-huh. for someone. Yeah? yeah. When I say that I'm still waiting... Mm-hmm. Um, Please. This is an encouragement. This is a someone. Christian channel. Yes. Can we start believing in the word of God? Like where is the place where as believers we forgot about Sarah? Sarah. Where is the place where as believers we forgot about Manoah's wife? Yeah. Where is the place where as believers we forgot about Elizabeth? Elizabeth? I have a problem with that. I have a problem with us having playing religion. Mm-hmm. I have a problem with us playing church and not being able to understand the journey of faith. Mm-hmm. And not and giving up on one another yeah. and pointing the fingers at one, one another. another. I have a problem with that, Rhoda. There is a problem with our brand of spirituality. It it lacks maturity. Yeah. You see, when you understand these things that way, then even if you see someone struggling with alcoholism, you know that you know what this person is probably on a journey. How can I be of help to yes. them? You don't avoid them. You don't, you don't avoid them, them, you don't talk about them, you don't no. do, there's something wrong with them. And it, guys, let's just begin to believe the Bible for the what Bible. it really is. Yeah. And at times when you are now believing the Bible, you can even be laughed at, like they and, need and, to and know. No, no. First hmm? and foremost, the people who injured me are not people in the world, they are people in, in the, the church. church. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with when <laughs> there's a lady who was telling me a very interesting story. There was this lady who had waited, waited, waited in her church. Mm-hmm. Must, have, must be one of these, you know, more traditional churches. Yeah. And so this one time, she, she goes and she meets this a, a lady, a, a much older lady, probably now maybe, you know, past menopause. You know, those people who have just basically given up on this journey. Yeah. So she's like, you know what, guys, I am tired of waiting. Say, so, hey, you're tired. Come, let's mm-hmm. pray. They went, all these ladies, eh? Yeah. Prayed over this lady. Prayed over this lady a whole afternoon until they felt, you know what, this thing has been answered and they left. Yeah. Uh-huh. Let me tell you, Rhoda, that lady conceived. But everyone else, everyone who was there was praying Pray. with her. Even those ones who had given up on this marriage, yeah. they were like, on this thing of children, yeah. they got pregnant. For God to show you, but you know what? This is supernatural. Wait. <laughs> Everyone else was praying God pregnant. Yes. <laughs> so, and then they were meeting each other. Like, you know, the, you are even forgotten, for, you know, forgotten about this journey. Yeah. You're not even thinking about, about children anymore. They were meeting each other, feeling embarrassed. They're like, eh, even you. Even you. Even you. Even you. We need to go back in believing in the supernatural power of God. That's mm-hmm. the simplicity of what I am saying. And encouraging each other to believe in the power of the cross. Thank you. Right? We, you know, yes, let me tell you, and, and huh? it's a good thing we are talking about this. Yeah. Because 
let me tell you, <laughs> our brand of Christianity, and that's why I talk about realignment of spirit, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. Because you can be in church, but your soul level is so heightened that you're thinking everything based on the intellect. Yes. It's easy for you to begin to tell me about science and what science mm -hmm. says. And biology. And biology mm -hmm. and what biology says. <laughs> yes. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 But where is the place for us to be so spiritually aligned that mm -hmm. we can understand that there is a supernatural power of God, yes. that he can do what no man can, can do? do. Oh. That's a conversation that we be, must begin to have, even within the church. Mm -hmm. Because we are playing church, but we lost yeah. faith. Oh, that hurts. We lost faith. It's almost as if within our church context, you can either be spiritual or intellectual. Mm -hmm. But you can have both. And we sometimes pride in our intellect more. Exactly. But you see, that's a place of religion. That's, the, yeah. that's, that's what um, education sometimes does to us, the secular mm -hmm. system. But you see now what you're trying to do in realignment is to come to the place where we can show you that yes, with your spirit... God can show you the yeah. things that no eye has seen, mm -hmm. no mind has conceived, yes. no, ear has, no ear has heard, and you believe it, and you labor with it in the place of prayer. We must go to the place of faith. Mm -hmm. oh. So that is what gives you peace. Yes. You understand it's about God. You know what? Right now, I'm at that place where... And that's, I guess, where I'm even free to talk about it. I died mm -hmm. to self, Rhoda. Wait, did you say I died or I die? I died to self. Like something within me just... The, oh, <laughs> it just... I, I, you know, when, when, when your self is still very high, you're very, mm -hmm. uh, you're very cautious about your reputation. Oh, yes. A few years ago, maybe I'd do a show mm -hmm. and then go back home and I'm wondering what are people going to say. Uh, uh, you know? I don't... I'm sure. <laughs> I think I also I'm died. <laughs> I think I also died. You're wondering what's, what's going to be on the comment box. You know, I right know. Now, whatever you say, imagine, oh, is I God know. edified by yes. this conversation? Mm -hmm. Are we taking people back to the truth of what is? And is it my truth? And am I, is it coming from a place of a pure heart and clean hands? Yeah. Once that's settled, that's okay. My name is Rhoda Kidula Kedaha and I thank God for an opportunity to mentor young girls, teen girls, because I was one myself and I have a teen daughter as well. So how are you raising them? How are you mentoring them? This is not just a book, it's a gift of values. Together with my sister Flora Kidula, we just sat down and had conversations surrounding our lives as teen girls and we came up with 12 topics that are very relevant to today's teen girl. As a parent, as a guardian, as a mentor, you need to gift your daughter this book because it will change her, it will inspire her and she will make better choices because of our experience, because of our mistakes and because of the wisdom we share here and we also approached our brother Sami Kaihuri who is passionate about high school ministry to do the same for the teen boy because of public demand so Sami Kaihuri has great and rich content for your teen son in this book you are now a man great topics great motivation great inspiration so get yourself a copy of this gift for your teen children or your teen nieces and nephews and together, let us impact this younger generation positively. Did you have that peace as a single lady? I heard yesterday in church, they were saying there's mature single and single, single and single. They were talking about the singles ministry and how there's a time you can get to a, a certain age and people are even afraid to ask, are you single, single? Because there is single again. Oh, there's a lot going on. Yeah. So why did you have that peace? Were you comfortable with people asking you about marriage and that question of when? You know, I think it's very interesting. And I saw that you inv you you interviewed Carol Pastor Reverend Carol Kiyama. Oh yeah. So we served with her, by the way, in youth ministry uh -huh. at ICC. And in a strange sense, she probably does, does doesn't even know what yeah. she did for me in that season because she was like. 
You know how she speaks. Yeah. Judy, Jesus is coming soon. Let us focus on ministry. <laughs> 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 and for a while to be honest it wasn't my focus oh yeah for a while it wasn't my focus mm -hmm. then um I, i moved and i went to house of grace church now mm -hmm. to start uh, the youth ministry in house of grace and then um again one of the things that i must also say that it's important for you to have desire Mm. One of the things that happens for singles sometimes if you are disappointed you go through disappointment after disappointment after disappointment you lose desire. Ah. Uh, what the Bible says God grants the desires, the desires of your heart. Of your heart. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to be able to ignite the desire. desire. But even as we ignite the desire so what happens is that it ignites your faith. You're mm -hmm. able to go back and begin to pray about that thing again. You get mm -hmm. it? So I I my desire was ignited because I get I met another man of God who was like hey Judy make a sana you know so th then I was like ah okay fine actually this is something probably I need to think about because I had shelved it uh-huh you get it eh? you can shelve it yeah I had I had truthfully uh-huh so so I I met his called Reverend Dazwi Tachero mm -hmm. so he 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 was like hey Judy make a sana and I was like okay fine that was a wake up call for me so I began to pray yeah. about it and then and I think coming to think about it now that you say was i desperate was i i think there was something different about my singleness because i remember we'd been church there was a time our church was on citizen tv mm -hmm. and the, the uh, one time bishop david muredi was was uh, interviewing people about single and happy yeah and i was the person who was picked to be to to be interviewed about yeah. it and i was talking about you know what you can still fulfill purpose even as you wait yeah And so for me I continued fulfilling purpose I served in youth ministry mm -hmm. until I finally got married And it didn't make sense you'd think at 30 something year old was too old to be with the youth but I found fulfillment I was enjoying you know molding them and mm -hmm. and, and 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 all that yeah So I think what I would say is even as you wait It's important for you one to have desire so yeah. keep praying about it and two it's important for you to find purpose so that then there's something that is giving you fulfillment mm -hmm. in your own space. Yeah, you're not wasting your time. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. And actually it's interesting because sometimes in the process of still serving in your purpose that's how you will be found. Yeah. Because my husband was in the worship team. Oh. Yes. I can't sing to who I can't hold that tune. Eh? Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> she was singing here that so popular no. intro. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> the so popular you've told us. Maybe at a figure you know when you enjoy your story in Ghana. So anyway, so I can't hold that tune. Yeah. So some, somehow because I was doing youth ministry, remember? Mm -hmm. So I'd go to prepare the tent every Saturday afternoon ah. in preparation for the youth to come for service the next day day yeah so as i'm preparing my husband would come after he has finished his worship team practice he worship mm -hmm. team meets on friday saturday, saturday afternoons yes. so he used to do youth ministry in a, with a mission called youth with a mission uh -huh. so he would pass by to give me ideas on how to do youth ministry, youth ministry. and that's how we connected wow you get mm -hmm. so it's important one have desire to keep on fulfilling purpose mm -hmm. as you keep on fulfilling purpose you will be found it is the, it was the most unlikely what is it kel it was the most unlikely connection, connection. people yeah. in the worship team connect to the people singers singers yeah. big zero grace big zero grace <laughs> yes yeah so so that's what i would say yeah. yes and when i have desire must i keep saying it publicly or to people Can I just desire marriage and keep it to myself and pray about it myself without anyone else knowing? I think you can you can pray about it yourself. For, but for me I think that's the most powerful. Uh -huh. It's the most powerful because tell you what other people have given up on you. Oh. Or they start so when you tell me pray for me one week when one month. When I was getting married dream cognizant that I have a strong personality you yeah. saw me somewhere and decided that I can only be interviewed by the first lady you yes. said something like that mm. yes i have an intimidating personality yes you do so <laughs> <laughs> so it would have been by the truly when i was getting married the people were like hey judy can submit yes i can by the way can you oh yes i do <laughs> you are yes submitting. yes i do you see it's people with a strong personality submit but you have to make sense 
Mm-hmm. You don't shout, we reason. Oh. We reason. We reason. It has to make sense. So you 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 just have to make sense. You so don't you couldn't l- just be married to anyone. So <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there are men who don't think about the reasoning. I have said it; it goes. You know, all you have to do is to know how to deal with us, and mostly, mm-hmm. it's just to tell us what what is your point, mm-hmm. and then we will be able to whatever. And then remember that the other thing that we talked about is alignment. Once you have made peace with your identity, yes. you know that submitting doesn't change anything. Do you know? Mm-hmm. I can say this very confidently. It's not in what you do. Yes. It's in the attitude the with which attitude, you do it. Attitude, yeah. Oh, submission is an attitude. It's an attitude. We get it all wrong. Do you know a woman can even come and kneel here and she's not submissive oh, at yes. all? Oh, yes. You're making sense. Yeah. <laughs> You're making a lot of yes. sense. Yes. So some, I might be more authentic. Mm-hmm. I might be more genuine. Yeah. It's an attitude. It's an attitude. I think for the first time in my life, <laughs> I have a, a word yes. for submission. Wow. Because at times I try do things for my husband, mm. expecting him to feel respected and submitted to. Mm. And I don't, I don't get it. Mm. I don't get that he feels that. So he says the how. Mm. It's the how. Mm. And that is the attitude. It's the attitude. It has it has no bearing on kneeling. Kneeling and cooking and washing feet. And cooking feet. and washing feet. You Actually, know, do you know you can become a greeter and an usher? Oh, in your house. for your husband. And it's not working. <laughs> Before I got married, I used to say I will be washing my husband's feet eh. every Saturday afternoon yes. to show my submission. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, okay, I've never washed his feet uh, five years down the line. Uh, time, time. Yes. <laughs> but uh, it has nothing to do with submission. It has nothing to do with mm-hmm. submission. But let me tell you, submission is in the little things. things. It's in the little things. It's in your heart posture. Mm-hmm. It's in your heart attitude that yeah. therefore then shows on the outside. You can, your culture can tell you to kneel, yeah. but your heart is not it's kneeling. Not there. And if it's kneeling, men want, we can kneel. You can kneel. Anyone can kneel. Anyone can kneel. But mm. is, it, is it at the end of the day? Because I, I remember one time I met someone who challenged me. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I don't, I've never seen you kneeling for your husband. And so when I told my husband, mm. and incidentally, he would understand. Because yeah. he had been raised in Uganda. Oh. He had schooled in Uganda for, and his mother is Ugandan. So he was like, no, but that's not our culture. He understood. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, this person who was telling me about needing has many, many issues yeah. back at home, which I knew about. And yeah. I'm not saying to whatever, to water it down. Yeah. All I'm saying is I realize over time that sometimes a person with a strong attitude, mm-hmm. because actually submission is what you see, is what you get. Explain that. What you see is what you get. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm showing this, mm-hmm. it's what is this, in my heart. Uh-huh. That's true submission. Like, even if I kneel, that is what is in my heart. Yes. But if you're kneeling and it's not in your heart, that's not submission. That is slavery. That is manipulation. Mm, actually, manipulation. Yeah. That is manipulation. Mm-hmm. And many people do that. As, if you don't have the inner eye to be able to see some of these things, then you'll be fooled. Mm-hmm. You know, if you really want to, to judge someone's attitude, I always say don't judge them by how they treat you as the man. Uh-huh. Judge them by how they treat the low people in society. In society. Yes. The, 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 the waiters, the, wa- the restaurant. The waiters <laughs> in the restaurant, the watchman, watchman. Mm-hmm. the maid, yes. the people who necessarily might not be able to give back. Oh, yes. Now, if someone comes and kneels to you mm-hmm. and goes and treats that person badly, that's not submission. Yeah. Because it's not in their heart it's posture. Not, yeah. If it's in their heart posture, imagine they can serve you straight, but because it's coming from a clean heart, mm-hmm. you feel it, you know it. Oh. I would like us to go back yes. to your season of waiting. Mm-hmm. You said you, you, you had even shelved it. Yes. And that was like a shocker to me because I'm used to it's what people wake up thinking. Oh. And, you know, 
every day the society reminds you when are you getting married mm. and it's all over people mm. are because of valentine's day oh it's a lot mm. so yours is a unique one and yes. i know there are also a number like you yes. who are so busy doing other things they and, even and forget gone, their single and gone, i think also the other thing is having gone through enough uh, disappointment oh you you get yeah yes. Remember that when you're carrying wounds you seem to attract rejection after rejection. Why? Because it's what is in your heart. It's what is what's in your uh, your emotion rather. So that's what becomes your spiritual atmosphere. So I walk in a relationship already anticipating it's not even you anticipate uh. there's something just you're not able to connect. Oh, Remember you understand? Yes. yes, you're not able to there's a, usually a missing link a barrier. that uh, yes that mm -hmm. uh, that does not allow you to connect to the other person. Okay. That's why this healing is so important because there are people probably who are not able to get into relationships mm -hmm. not necessarily because they are bad people but because there's something that happened somewhere along the way that became an emotional barrier. Yeah. You get it? And then the people who are married Again, I, you know, like we said, there are people who are married but not able to come into that place of oneness mm -hmm. because of the emotional barrier. Yeah. Mm. Oh. So for someone who is in that season mm. and even the question of are you, when are you getting married irritates them, what would you advise a single lady? One, the fact that it irritates you means that you haven't made peace. No. Oh. Mm -hmm. True. You understand? Mm -hmm. yeah? Marriage should not be a goal that people are striving towards. Yes. That everything else doesn't take second stage. I said, and I always say, if you get married without a sense of identity, I, I'm blessed to have found someone who mm -hmm. was able to, you know, hold me through my, you know, self-discovery journey until I got here. Yeah. Now that tells you I'm not too strong, right? You're still strong. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I'm blessed in that way. Yeah. But if you get into marriage without a sense of identity, Rhoda, yeah. this thing can kill you. Because you will get into marriage depending on the man oh, for identity. Yes. Oh, and you'll overwhelm someone. You'll overwhelm son? someone. And yeah. then sometimes should they even make a mistake, you crash. Yes. So it's important, even as you wait, just find, discover yourself, mm -hmm. discover what you're passionate about. Yeah. Continue living your life. And as, as you, of course, continue to pray yeah. about it. So you don't shelve who you are. You don't shelve who you to are. To meet the goal of yes, marriage. And yes. then when I get married, I will now pick my purpose. Mm, no, mm, mm, it doesn't mm, work like that. It doesn't that. work like that. It, it works out better if you're moving towards something. This person comes, they'll find you, they are, you're moving towards something. Mm -hmm. You get, marriage has its own challenges. Like I said, you know, just living and cleaving is the greatest challenge, especially in black Africa. Yeah. Because both of us have to learn to live and cleave. And cleave. Working towards the journey towards oneness is a lot of work on its own. So we should stop focusing too much on the wedding and oh. realize that the marriage is a journey. And that journey has to be very intentional to work towards oneness on mm -hmm. a daily. Even on, I'm a still daily. on a daily. I'm still working on mm -hmm. oneness. If you stop working, it, marriage stops working. Yes, it, we will not be able to get where we needed to go. Mm -hmm. You know, many people tell me my book is good. You, I'm, I'm, you're one of those people. Yeah. But it's actually a combination of two people coming together with unique strengths. My husband is a creative. Oh. You understand? Mm -hmm. So he's the person behind the font design, ah. behind the layout, you know, guiding the people and mm -hmm. all that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. If I didn't have that and I had someone who was wired like me, we wouldn't have this. We wouldn't. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give this example to show mm -hmm. where even one degree, even just a small degree of oneness can be able to take a couple. Mm -hmm. You understand? And oneness is, you said, in mind? <laughs> in, in, in spirit, in spirit, soul, in soul and, body. and in body. Now I have to take you back. Yes. <laughs> Do you mean mm. I might be stagnating in life or not growing? That's the same thing. Mm. Because of something my mother did when I was in the womb or it's possible. six months old. It's possible. It's interesting how people, how, how the mind registers things. How would I imagine that I would be affected by that thing? 
Yet I knew it all my life, but I didn't know that this was the cause for where I was where at. You were. This, please not. I was discovering myself in my 40s. Wait. <laughs> you were discovering. That's why I asked. Did she come to a place of accepting you at some point? We became family. We were, I, remember, I, I, I was not raised out there. I was yeah. raised with these three people. Three others. Who are four, four people within the context of family. Mm-hmm. Mm. But now after that, she embraced you and treated you like the others. She did. But remember I also said that I was a bit of an extrovert. Oh, yeah. Remember that my mother was a bit wounded. Yeah. So because she was wounded, any wounded parent tends to be a bit controlling. Oh, yes. So they would tend to prefer someone that they can actually be able to... Yes. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't that kind of child because Mm -hmm. I had a mind of my own. You were not following rules. No, I was... (laughs) Yeah. I'm the kind of person who thinks out of the box, to be honest. Uh I think out of the box. I'm not rebellious. Yeah. But uh, I have a mind of my own. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so, so, so we had challenges because of that. And then a few other things happened. I, I was the first one to give my life to Christ. Oh. So that was another challenge because she didn't understand that decision. Yes. You get, yeah? So there are all those things that were happening along the way. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, 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 let me say, I would call myself a, a pioneer, a, bio, a barrier breaker yeah. and, and that. Yeah? And the reason why I want to say that is because there are people even who will watch this, who for them in their own families, they may not necessarily fit in. Don't think people hate you. Sometimes your purpose will call you out differently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's possible. It's for possible. something that was done to me when I was a baby mm. to affect me now and yes. to stagnate me now. Yes. It's possible because it affects the state of your emotion and affects the state of your mind. So once you have gone through rejection at whatever level, mm-hmm. you stop believing in yourself. When you say you discovered yourself in your 40s, mm. does it mean that someone who is not yet 40 or even past 40 should not worry? But in fact, thank you. <laughs> that is the point. <laughs> that is the whole point. Now no, you've got daughter. it. I want to hug you and take you home. <laughs> no, my, my like daughter, you got it. there was this pressure of uh. when my daughter was in primary school mm. and I used to host a children's show. Mm. And the first question you ask children is, what do you want to be? And mm. these children are saying, pilot. And my own daughter used to ask her. And number one, she used to change every day. I'm like, you need to take one and stick to it. So there's a time she started saying, I don't know. And as a parent, I felt like everyone should know, other children know, you know, no, have something to say. Then my husband told me, imagine even me now and my age, I'm still knowing what I want to be. Stop mm. giving this baby pressure at 10 mm. to get herself together and know what she wants to become. And mm. even you, you're still knowing what you want to become. Mm. So you're saying, no one should get pressured or worried. Yeah, I think, I, I, and I think, especially in in Africa, mm-hmm. we give a, we give up on ourselves a little too soon. Yeah, like when someone reaches forty, that's about Even it. 30. Even thirty, yes, especially yeah. as a woman, right? Yes, yes. But we can always have a good chance, you mm-hmm. know. And and now that we are beginning to have this conversation. I think it would be an, an important conversation even for parents to have yes. within themselves. Eh? Because once I've seen what most parents tend to do is because I'm an extrovert mm-hmm. or because I'm wired a certain way, I want my children to be a certain way and you can't be able to handle my children with different personalities and different temperaments. Oh, yes. you get, eh? yeah. But I think that the call that God is taking us to, even as you think about realignment, is to come to that place where we can be able to celebrate each child with yeah. their uniqueness. And be okay with whatever path they, they take. take in yes. life. Yes. Ah, oh. and for every parent, we also get crushed our expectations. But by the way, eh? in fact, the the problem is that the parents have carried wounds for a very long time. Oh yes. So they gave up on their dreams, mm-hmm. and because they gave up on their <laughs> dreams, they're trying to live up on their dreams through, through their, their children. children. So it's important for us to have a conversation that says, yeah. even for you as a parent, at forty, at fifty, mm-hmm. at sixty, it's possible yeah. for you to rediscover yourself. It's possible for you to rekindle every dead hope. It's possible for you to dream again. Yes. What are we saying to the young people? You are having this conversation when you are much younger. Let it be that you will run faster. Yes. Yeah. Now that you know. Now that you know. Yeah. What are we saying to the couples, Rhoda? Because that's why we are here. We must speak to the yes. couples. What are we saying to the couples? We're mm. telling the couples there is no 
perfect person. All of us are broken. Yeah. Give one another a chance to heal within that marriage. Give yourself a chance first to heal. Extend grace to your partner. And by the grace of God, pray that you will come to that place of oneness, journeying together to fulfill the destiny that God has for your marriage. Amen. Amen. You know how powerful that statement is. Well, thank you. <laughs> you, know, you know, the more you talk, mm. the more I start thinking through are the things I, I got wrong when I was single. The expectations I had on marriage and what I thought marriage is, you mm -hmm. know. But that allowing each other to heal. And why I'm saying even when you share a story, I still see a strong woman is. Mm. I believe it's only a strong woman who can accept when they are corrected. Mm. Especially by a spouse. You know, someone comes and tells me, this is your issue. We, the first instinct is to fight. Mm. Because you've known me now, Ban. <laughs> <laughs> How can you come and say I have a weakness in this whole department and you've just known me like five years ago, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. even having that attitude of being corrected, I think makes you a powerful woman. Oh, glory to God. Tell me about this book, Kwanzaa, the yes. packaging. Oh, thank you. I really, you. really thank love you, thank this you, thank packaging. You, thank you so much. And that it was done in Kenya. Yes. Everything International was standards. standards. Glory to God. By the way, mm -hmm. and the reason I was very, very intentional when, you know, even when we were working towards the book, I was yeah. like, you know what? We have to hit global standards. Yeah. Why? Because, Rhoda, I believe this message that you're talking about yeah. today is a message that the world needs to hear. Yes. A lot of my clients, by the way, are from the first world. Oh. Why? Because they removed spirituality. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of, you know, dealing with the soul, dealing with the mind, mind. but they're not dealing with the soul, the mm -hmm. spirit rather. And so you might look like you have a, an answer, yes. but it's just a matter of time before you deep again. Mm -hmm. You get? Yeah. So, so I believe that this is a message that needs to be heard across, across the, the world. Yeah. And for us here. As, as Africans, is yes, we do have church, we do, we are playing spiritual, mm -hmm. but then we are almost eliminate intellect, we almost eliminate healing, and therefore we are believers still hurting one another mm -hmm. True. because of the things that we are carrying. We are believers still not being able to hold out our marriages. Yeah. We are believers still not being able to succeed and fulfill our purpose. Yes. And even excel in our careers. And even excel in our careers. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And so, when I said the realignment solution, there were, un there were testimonials coming back. Yeah. Of people finding healing, of people finding, you know, their purpose, of people now being able to take the journey of their life. Mm -hmm. And I wondered how it was that I could encapsulate this truth. Yes. That I could reach as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. That was the driving force for Wait. writing the book. In realigning solution, yes. you hold seminars no i yeah. do i have i have 10 weeks so I, okay i have a 10 week class uh, class oh, okay yes so we so now this was trying to encapsulate the class into okay a book. oh now i understand yes power your vision yes so we we realize that when you are carrying wounds mm -hmm. you're not able to visualize who you are yeah and visualize where you need to go so when you are healed your vision is powered powered Wow, I, I love the questions. I've just seen them. Oh, yes. For people who feel stuck and yes. unable to find direction. Yes. Lost your zeal, mm. passion and drive. Mm. And sadly, some people lose their zeal when they get in marriage. That's true. Mm. And the zeal just disappeared. They forget who they were. They can't identify their gifts, abilities and uniqueness. Yes. So we can, yes, read this book, but mm. also be part of your class. Yes. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. So so the idea is, I tried as much as possible to put the truth that is in the class into the into book. A book. Yeah. So the idea was to get as much as possible the information. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, there's the hand holding that sometimes would just be an advantage. Uh -huh. So then if someone probably is not able to get all the answers to the book, I yeah. invite them to the class. The class, okay. Yes, yes. Tell us what's the content of the book. The content of the book. Yeah. So first, it takes you to the place where you discover the gems within you. Mm -hmm. The gems is what did what did God deposit in you? Mm -hmm. What are the gifts and the abilities? Yes. Then now you begin to journey outwards. What is it that hindered those those gems mm -hmm. from being 
seen. Yes. And then after you see those gems and you are able to identify those those uh, gifts mm -hmm. and you're able to identify what had covered them, now we take it to the next level where we begin to show you what would you expect as you journey out to begin to show who you are. Yeah. Because you must have the confidence. What we are telling you is not so that you know to keep it. Mm -hmm. It's you know it so that you can express it. Yes. Okay. You get it. Mm -hmm. So taking you the journey towards expression. Yeah. And then back to the place of connecting with God because in this journey you mm. need God. You need God. We cannot eliminate the spiritual factor. Yes. Yes. I I've seen is it a tagline your greatest discovery is is to find your true identity. Yes. Once you find your true identity mm -hmm. it becomes easier to fight with your past. Oh yes. And then after you finish the realignment program, after you finish power of vision, will life happen again? Yes. Mm -hmm. But when you have your identity, oh, uh, you you'll be you'll be able to face life. You'll be able to face life. Thank you, As Jesus. It happens. Ah, give me a high five. <laughs> As life happens, yes. because now you, I know my identity, I yes. know who I am. Yes. I, and I'm even looking at the context of marriage. Yes. And as you said, if someone knows their identity, you don't expect your husband to do things that only God can do. Me, ah, right? Oh, Jesus. Let me tell you. Now that one, you, had, you hit it home. Eh. You learn where God is, is and, and where, where man is. is. A human being. You placed them in the right place. There's a question we were asked during premarital. Mm. What is this one thing that your spouse can do mm. to make you leave her? Or him or her? And people are talking about infidelity, lying, all these things. And then we were told, if there's something your spouse can do and you already know you will leave, don't get married. Because they might actually, they are, they are human beings. They are human beings. They actually don't even know that they can do that. Where? <laughs> mm. It is at that point yes. that we were saying, are we ready for marriage? Yes, that's true. That's really true. And let me tell you, for me, mm -hmm. as Judy, we, we, we actually took a journey, yeah? Mm -hmm. And it was a tough journey yeah. of living and cleaving and coming to that place of oneness yes until Rhoda you come to that place where you understand that your spouse can fail you will fail you yes I'm saying <laughs> can, can because will. in case he hasn't uh -huh. oh yeah yeah he mm -hmm. can fail you but still you extend grace grace because you know where your source is your identity is mm -hmm. in Christ yes and even if something happens to them, I have, I have a, a, a friend's friend <laughs> whose husband actually committed suicide. And it was heavy on her. She also wanted to go. Like she was like, I also have to kill myself. I need to follow him. And I think she also went through a journey of now identity, wondering who am I without him? And as we speak, I think she has found that person. Mm. She's thriving. Amen. If she doesn't tell you her husband committed suicide, you won't know. So I was wondering, what if you found yourself before? Yeah. Mm. Mm. You even handle some tragedies better. Better. It's true because life will happen. Life mm -hmm. will happen. But we come to that place, eh? Where yeah. um, even like, like Paul said, we fight the fight of faith. Faith, yeah, yeah, with with greater understanding. We're not saying that it's gonna be, you know, all all romance and mm -hmm. all that. But even if it's not there, then you understand that the purpose for marriage is much greater. Yeah, and you're able then to traverse, you know, whatever it is holding on mm -hmm. to faith. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So this book is for everyone, actually. It's for everyone, yeah. actually. It's for everyone, It's for actually. everyone. If you look at it, if you look at the back, yeah. it's, uh, there are a lot of testimonials. It's been done by men, done by women. Just mm -hmm. this weekend, there was a, we were hosting a group. Eh? Yeah. Or rather, a group was hosting me, Christian male professionals. Mm. Yes. Men. Men. Uh -huh. Who are going through the book. Wow. Together. Together. And you know, for them, it was just the fact that it was bringing them to the place of vulnerability, mm -hmm. to be vulnerable first with themselves yes. and then to be vulnerable with one another. One another. 
Wow. This is really good. Thank you. Where Thank can you. we find the book? It's in uh, Keswick Bookshop. Mm -hmm. It's in Nuria. Uh -huh. It's in CLC yeah. uh, Bookshop. It's in uh, Ufungamano, Yaya Center. Yeah. We are at Scripture Union. Oh. Yes, we, we, are, we are almost in every bookshop. In every bookshop, we are almost yeah. Almost in every bookshop, yes. Wow, so yes. guys, let's get this book and, and get to rediscover our purpose. Yes. The yes. earlier, the better. The that's earlier, what I've better. picked. Thank you. The yes. earlier, the, the better. better. But even if you're late, that's not to say that it's over. Yes. I discovered myself late, mm -hmm. and here I am. You know, just doing what God. And one of the things that I, I just want to encourage someone that when the Word of God says Joel to twenty five twenty six mm -hmm. that He restores the years that the locusts and the cucumber has eaten. Yes. Once you come back into that place of alignment, mm -hmm. it's almost like your GPS comes back on. Wow. Restored. Restored. He has a way of bringing you back, restoring the lost time, and helping you to fulfill your purpose. What would you tell twenty year old self? your 20 year old self with the knowledge you have now i guess i'd, I'd be more patient i'll tell myself to be more patient with myself mm -hmm. i probably will not understand the pitfalls in the journey yeah but eventually it will make sense it will make sense yes, eventually eventually it will make sense wow what's your advice to young couples young is five and below uh, my 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 advice to you first is uh, even as you get married, first and foremost, make it your business or make it a choice or be committed to finding yourself. Mm -hmm. When you really, really, really honestly have a look at yourself, you will look at your life, your spouse from a whole different perspective. It will help you to mm -hmm. extend grace. Yeah. And then with that information, strive towards oneness. Oneness. Strive towards oneness with everything within you. If there's one thing the enemy fights, Rhoda, mm -hmm. is oneness. In marriage. In marriage. Because if we are not working together. Yes. And don't let anything stand in the way. When I say anything, yeah. I mean anything. And anyone. Anyone. <laughs> and sometimes, like I was saying, it might look like I'm anti the African culture. Yeah. But I know it. I believe it with everything within me. That when I, if a couple is allowed to come together. Yes. They can do great exploits and there will be a blessing to a the families. A blessing, a to greater the family. blessing to the family. So don't let your family come in between you. Yes, that's true. And even your friends. Yes. First friends, let go. Then, I'm not saying don't, go, don't associate, mm -hmm. but they should not be the, at the center of, of your the marriage. marriage. Yeah. Have friends, but don't let them be the center the, of the marriage. Don't let them be the center of the marriage. Yeah. You keep saying very powerful things. I don't know if you realize. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think you don't realize. You know, when someone actually sits down and thinks through this, the things you have said today, mm. I think they are so powerful. And if we just applied what you've said just for today, and then we take the book, read and apply, Glory to we will God. not only change our families, but the society. That I is what that. I believe. I believe that. I believe yeah. that with all my heart. That's why, by the way, I'm very committed to this message. Mm -hmm. I'm committed to sending out, sending it out to couples, yeah. to churches, to you know, organizations, mm -hmm. because it it can change our culture. Yes. It can change an individual. Mm -hmm. It can change a family. It can actually change the church. Wow. So we power our visions yes. by rediscovering our purpose. purpose. Yes. I think I'm a good student. <laughs> I have learned. How much is the book? It's going for okay. D di different books bookshops sell them at di sell it at different oh, prices. Yeah, but understand. maybe about let's say two thousand two hundred and fifty there oh, about. about. Yes. So. Are yes. you in textbook center? Not yet, Not but yet. Are, I, I think they should be able to approve us by the end of the week. Oh, okay. Yes, Keep but again, checking. if yes, and if someone doesn't. Is not able to get into the into any bookshop, other bookshops. Yeah. Go to www.poweryourvision.co.ke. Oh, there is judimzungu.com. It will link you to that. Oh, don't it will link you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so you can also use that one. www.judimzungu.com. Oh, then you'll okay. see an icon for Power Your Vision. Mm -hmm. You'll still be able to buy to it. To buy it yes. from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much. You're I don't even think you need a parting shot. <laughs> <laughs> you have said, we have said great enough. things. Yeah, and, thank you. Um, for, for me, my take home is just healing. Rhoda, find healing. Find your purpose. Find you. Thank you. Don't overburden Jackson. Yes. 
And once you find that, you will be a good wife. A very good wife. A very good and happy, awesome wife. Thank you. (laughs) Then now, you're not waiting for him to give you happiness. And to also reflect to my children. Yes. Ah, this, by the way, this is so powerful. Because when you are not happy or you don't know your purpose, you are a burden to your spouse, you are a burden to your children, you are a burden at your workplace. Yes, to your friends everywhere you go. You said you kept moving jobs. Yes. Not for money. Yes. I was just, something was not answering you. Yeah. Me. Yes. Wow. Thank you for your time. You're I really welcome. appreciate thank your you time too. and thank your you wisdom. Too. Thank you so much. And I pray that God will continue using you because yes. this is kingdom business. Amen. You are a kingdom life coach. Yes. The first one I've ever come across. <laughs> kingdom <laughs> life coach. Thank you. So if someone, the last one, if someone is an individual who just needs a life coach, let me say it. Yes. They can still come to you. Must I be in the class? Well, I try... <coughs> The, it's good you ask, ask, yeah. ask that question. Now, I don't like talking to people mm-hmm. without empowering you because you will depend on me. I don't understand. I take you through the class yeah. so that I empower you uh-huh. and release you. Once you're empowered, I know that you will go out there, mm-hmm. you will survive. But okay. if you come and just talk to me, after, oh. after t- it becomes a business. Yes. Oh, yes. Are you getting So I'll be waiting another time you come and talk to me 3,000 again. Again, I don't want that. I want to empower you based on the word of God. Once you're empowered based on the word of God, God, your source will be God. Yeah. You direct me back to God. Back to God. Not to me. No. I don't want to. They should not depend on you. Yes. But I'll give you the tools. Yes. Yes. Wow. Thank you so much. But it does, what I do includes coaching, by mm-hmm. the way. So what I'm, I'm talking about, I, I empower you, I coach you, mm-hmm. and I release you. Yes. By the grace of God, having understood your relationship with God, God. better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, we have to end there. <laughs> <laughs> I think any other question I have, I will inbox you. <laughs> yes, guys, get yourself a copy. Power your vision. Thank I you. think this will help us unpack so much and get direction in our lives. Thank you, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, you for your wisdom. Hope to see more of you. I'll definitely be back. Yes, we you have should. A date. Yes, you should. <laughs> thank you for watching as well. What is your take home? What have you learned? What are you going to do better? Any questions for her? Let me know in the comment section. Bye. I'll see you on the next one.